Oh, hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DJ, episode number 178, live in New York with the Penguins. Pudgy Penguins, how are you doing today? We are going to do a quick market recap review as he is trying to hold that down. I heard that, uh, I saw it on Instagram last night. As we give uh, a market review for today, uh, we're going to be going through the market. <laughs> oh, fear and greed index. Fear and greed index today is that putting. Come on! Uh, coin of the day is pie on market sentiment. Uh, liquidations were at 2.8 million uh, versus 3.4 million short liquidations. We're going to have a buy pressure of 51% bullish, and it really shows the buy bit with 18.2 million longs that were shorted compared to 20.5 million shorts that were sh uh, shorted, that liquidated. Really good price of where the market index currently is in neutral, but there is a great bearish market coming out. Get ready for that. If you look at the markets today, GMX started to have a breakthrough. So as Brock Pierce said, greatest, bull markets produce bullshit. Bear markets produce bear fruit. So we're here today with a lot of our penguins from our little igloo, and we're going to have one of the greatest people that I've gotten to meet here today at the Momo. MoMA. I said Momo. MoMA, the Modern Art Museum. Museum of Modern Art. And I have just been drinking homemade lemonade. And uh, so... Um, it was a great day. Uh, we're actually going to be releasing a Tezos NFT that the MoMA is sending out for free, which is really cool. Uh, great AI art piece today. Who do we have with us today? This is Hypnotic. Hypnotic? What do you do? I buy JPEGs. Yeah. What, what JPEG do you currently rock right now on your shirt? Uh, Pudgy Penguins. What do you think of Pudgy Penguins? I'm really bullish. Uh, when, did you, when, did, when did you get into Pudgy Penguins? Uh, a little over a year ago. What, what was it that brought you to Pudgy Penguins? Yeah, I think it was about the inclusivity of the project. The community is absolutely amazing. You know, it's bridging between Web3, but also the normal community of people who don't even know what NFTs are. They have good positive vibes. If you look at them on Instagram, they have over 300,000 followers, um, pushing out a lot of good energy, a lot of positive messaging to just regular people out there. One of the biggest airdrops that, uh, with the uh, Pudgy Penguins was their Little Pudgies. Uh, did you get some of your Little Pudgies? So the Little Pudgy, I got my Little Pudgy. I got my ROG, uh, which was actually the first airdrop. Uh, that ROG is, is extremely valuable. I think Luca is going to be sharing some really, really uh, good alpha in the, in the shortcoming. Okay. Uh, so what was one of the biggest things that got you into blockchain? Uh, you know, actually, it was uh, from a really good friend of mine who uh, told me to take a look at a project called Board Ape Yacht Club. And, uh, I think I've heard of that. I yeah. Heard of that. Yeah, I think they were they were pretty popular at some point. I really wasn't uh, about the, the, the design or the art, so um, I passed on them. And when he presented me the Pudgy Penguins, I thought, you know, I could get behind this project because of the aesthetics, the cuteness, everything. Um, and, you know, the rest is history. So with projects that have really cool IP pieces, what are you doing with your IP? Uh, right now, uh, it's mostly merchandising. Uh, I got a really cute T-shirt on right now. I'm going to look forward to getting some of the uh, Lego penguins as well as, you know, potentially having them licensed for um, other types of merchandising, toys and so forth. Where do you see uh, your, not the market, but your market going in 2023? Uh, I think that overall we're, we're going into recession just on the macroeconomics. So uh, that always has kind of downward pressure on, on the overall economy. But I think that strong projects like Pudgy Penguin are going to be able to thrive because people still need to park their money somewhere. And, you know, Pudgy Penguins have a great uh, leadership crew team uh, that are really doing all the right things to build a very strong brand. And, um, you know, I think just by evidence of having this space is, you know, in, in a Korean barbecue place, you know, we, we have a really good time. So, you know, a lot of positive energy to having long-term success for our projects. 
All right, yeah, no, I, I, really, really good piece on that. Thank you so much. Uh, if someone wants to follow you on social media, where can they find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter, hypnotic8, H-Y-P-N-O-T-I-Q-U-E, 8. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, as we close every interview out, 10 seconds, words of wisdom. Make sure you're making the most of every day because you don't know where tomorrow is going to be going. Um, make uh, meaningful conversations. Have great friends around you because, um, you know, tomorrow is never a guarantee. All right. Hey, thank you. Thank you. All right. Who do we have next to us? What's your name? Uh, Dokuso. Dokuso. Dokuso, what do you do in blockchain? Um, I just collect penguins. Now, do you talk about what type of penguins you have at all? No, I kind of be very humble about it, but I do have about like eleven penguins. You have a you have a cute penguin. Uh, many people have told you that you have a cute penguin. Um, yeah, they're a big fan of the ninja headband. <laughs> I like the ninja headband. Uh, I gotta love my red balloon. Uh, so where uh, wh what other projects are you a part of? It's all I'm all in the pudgy penguins. So I have pudgy penguins, little pudgies, rods. I'm all in on that. All right. Nice to hear. Are you into any other blockchain things, DeFi, crypto, or anything? I've looked into it, but as of right now, I'm not really uh, considering staking when uh, when Shanghai comes out. But other than that, not much. Um, so one of the things that uh, that uh, Pudgy Penguins did is they did the, the bridge for porting their, their little pudgies over. Have, is that something that you participated in? Uh, no, I have not, but, um, I'm a, I'm a, but it's great for the community. I think it's good for opening up new users for Polygon and other things of that nature. So I think it's a, it's a plus for the community. All right, nice. Uh, do you think that the future of community pieces are really going to push a, a lot forward with like how Pudgy Penguins is putting things forward like this? Um, yeah, I think the, 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 the leadership team is super supportive on like sub-communities. And I personally um, have created Pudgy Gaming with the uh, uh, help of Adam. Um, and so we've we've uh, we've got full support from the team. They're willing to issue uh, soulbound tokens. Um, it's been great. They've been very supportive. All right. Uh, so uh, do you? Uh, it was, was an amazing day today, and there was this is actually the second pudgy get together, right? All right. This is the second pudgy meetup uh, in NYC. We had our first one initially, at another K, uh, K Town restaurant, and uh, we're just having a blast right now. Uh, it's, it's great when communities get together in real life outside of conferences and events and sort of it's that own community build. And that's, you know, as we were talking previously, like, you know, of the, you know, B Basies, it was a community that built their own project. It was their community that was building out advertising and it's great things. What are you doing for your brand? Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm co-founder of the Pudgy Gaming and we're trying to create like a gaming initiative for like Pudgy Penguins, as well as like anyone outside of the NFC community as well. Just bring them in their Discord and just looking for a group and trying to find people to play games with. <laughs> That's it. Uh, and so where where can someone find uh, information about Pudgy Gaming? Um, you can look it up on Twitter at Pudgy Gaming um, and join a Discord from there. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, as always, I have to ask 10 seconds, words of wisdom. Uh, words of wisdom? Uh, tomorrow's not promised, so just make the most of your day, I guess. Yeah. All right. Hey, I love it. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. All right? Cool. So, we're, as we're going to move across the table, we're going to interview random other people. Uh, and so, now, who do we have here? All uh, right, Anthony, I requested to speak in your Twitter space. In person? Yes. I'm uh, here at the table... And I'm in the Twitter space as well. Nice. And Anthony, what is it that you do? I'm the community manager at Uniswap Labs. At where? Uniswap Labs. Okay. So uh, what do you do at Uniswap Labs? Well, I talk to our customers uh, day to day, help answer their questions, help host events, host Twitter spaces like these, and overall just vibe out. Nice. Nice. Let's, let's real, fix this real quick. Make sure that you can get brought up as an invite to speak. So we got that going for us. But uh, as we're doing that, um, what's one of the things that you'd really like to see in the last year in, in, the, in blockchain? That's a really good question. Um, I would say my favorite thing to see and that I would like to see further is the development of soulbound tokens. I feel like what makes the blockchain um, unique is the fact that 
people have access over their identity and they're able to exchange it with other people. But we live in a world where NFTs are, you know, able to be exchanged with other people. And that's great. But having a soulbound token that stays with you, you know, for the rest for the rest of your life, that stays in your wallet, is a really great way to, you know, actually identify with your, you know, achievements and have that identity with you um, throughout your your you know journey through the blockchain no soulbounds and dids and kyds really set the precedent of being able to prove who you are but one of the things that's also sort of protective of that is it can't be stolen so if your wallet accidentally gets slipped it can't get moved but when what some really cool is marketplaces that are doing soulbound tokens they're doing interactions with their marketplace whitelist only and so i've seen where some projects have done self-created soulbound tokens um by almost breaking the contract you know sort of taking away first principle but for the purpose of protection do you think that something like that is where we're moving to or do you think it's more like not my keys not my problem hmm. See, I, I think just like i don't care if you're trying to make money but like I never knew marketplaces uh, did that in the first place. Um, it's custom, some custom one-off product. I mean, if the user is okay with that, then I think that's their choice. Um, yeah. It's up to the, the user. Yeah, it is up to the user, you know, just like you're not forced to buy anything. You're not forced to sell anything if you're not forced to buy it. Where there's that exclusivity to it, you know, it's one of those things of trying to control the, 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 the market for it, but more the protect the user in a way. So especially when it comes to DIDs, uh, you know, when the day comes when you have to move wallets, you know, if you migrate a wallet or, you know, uh, some other protocol other than like, uh, warm XYZ or delegate.cash comes out, you know, some people don't want to move stuff off of their hot wallets, you know, and so, um, yeah. But what's one of the big things that you got going on in Pudgy Penguins? I mean, the biggest thing is community. I mean, the fact that I get to in person meet with other Pudgy Penguin holders and overall just have a great time. I mean, that's the real utility of a NO2 collection, in my opinion. You know, the fact that you could like get together have fun, meet people who share the same interests as you. There's nothing better than that. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to continue this tradition, continue hanging out with NYC penguins, penguins in around the world. And yeah, the igloo is, is awesome. Awesome. How long have you been, been in the pudgies? Uh, since June of last year. So June, 2022. I think that we joined the family at the same time. <laughs> nice. All right. No. Uh, what are you looking forward to in 2023? In 2023, I'm looking forward to uh, the implementation of blockchain in other industries, specifically energy. I think, I think the blockchain has, to me, the blockchain's best use case is allowing people to have ownership and control over what they produce and allow them to exchange that. I think with energy, um, the way we're, you know, Generating, distributing electricity is is the same that we did 100 years ago when Thomas Edison first created um, the first utility uh, and first generation station. And I feel like we could do better. And with so blockchain, um, I'm really looking forward to just seeing people have control over their electricity production and have control to participate in a wider market. You know, not only um, not only buy electricity from one utility, but being able to buy electricity from you know, your neighbor or the guy down the block. Nice. Amazing. Yeah, no, uh, almost tokenization of everything. And uh, so 10 seconds as we finish up every interview, uh, 10 seconds, final words of wisdom. Final words of wisdom. Um, one of the most important things I learned in life is the fact that whenever things are going wrong or whenever things are going bad, just keep on moving, keep on pushing. There's always going to be a better day ahead of you. And don't lose focus on the bigger picture. We live in a world where there's two pictures, a small picture and a big picture. Right now we're living in the small picture and that's incrementally changing the bigger picture. Don't get caught in the small picture. It's all about the bigger picture. Think about why 
living is important and why um you know why why you're here to make the world a better place because we're all here to make the world a better place and we all have the capability to do that so keep on pushing keep on moving and you will change the world awesome keep on moving is the way to do it and as we end this we're going to move on to our next person and keep on going thank you, thank you much. so much for joining us tonight all right as we move along we get to move on to the next I haven't hi how are you doing tonight i'm great i'm doing amazing i'm so happy to be participating uh nyc penguins because uh, this is our just like chat. These are our buddies and I love these people. They are our bros and I'm impossibly happy that we can do it every month and we get to see all these people. Uh, how long have you been in Pudgy Penguins? So I joined uh, almost April, a year ago. So I saw my husband minted his little Pudgies and I immediately fell in love with them. Because I just, I saw at those traits and I like that we get to see the full body of little pudges. I love that so much. So I forced him to present me one little pudgy and then I started to accumulate my own way. Just I was spending much money. I was trading other projects and I traded. Uh, and I accumulated 16 little pudges, but in uh, in August last year, I was scammed and they drained all my wallet, so I lost like everything. And then uh, I just told that um, that I was scammed, and all those people in the huddle, some of those people presented me little pudge. Uh, one guy, carrot, he bought me my little pudge bag. So I started to uh, get my collection back. I started to recover, rebuild, you know. And then time passed. I presented all those little pudges back to people. I bought, uh, I bought them different little pudges. And I presented uh, four little pudges to people who helped me. And then uh, I started to, uh, every month, I was very severe. It was buying. I spent all my salaries. So I, w I started to rebuild like September, October, November, December. And then, um, thank God, bull run happened. So I could trade some of my uh, little pudgies and I got big pudgy right now. Nice. And so do you still have a little pudgy? Yeah, I have. Currently, I have 13 little pudgies and a big pudgy. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, what was one of the things, uh, when did you get into blockchain? Um, probably 2020. Yeah, that's true. What was your first crypto you bought? Uh, Bitcoin. Smart buy. Yeah, Bitcoins and Ethereum, because I always knew that these two cryptocurrencies are the most popular on uh, just list, what people prefer to buy. Also, because I lived in Ukraine back then, and I couldn't really buy crypto much. So uh, the other currency that I bought was Ethereum Classic, okay. Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. Love Litecoin. Yeah, so just what happened was this, because uh, this was um, the only one way I, I just I used exchanges so I could buy. And I have to say when all the bull run happened, uh, 2021 uh white coin not not only not so uh ethereum classic went so much up like triple not even triple no even i would say like 10 times more like that moment unfortunately i didn't trade it because like i saw okay like i was so excited i thought maybe it will go even higher so i just i missed that moment since then i think i gained the experience of trading thanks when uh, all the excitement comes taking profit yeah yeah making profit all the time i think you you shouldn't be attached to the idea you always have to make more you you you, you live here right now so you have to do the profits you have to get the profits all the time uh as much as people are excited you should you should sell these things and i think with crypto i get that experience and when i came to nft i think i i i got that sense when you have to sell and when you have to buy and what i definitely realized 
you shouldn't be selling or buying. No, you shouldn't be like selling or buying, especially buying when you have a FOMO. Because FOMO ruins everything. It just, it makes, uh, it makes you not feel your logic and intuition. You know, I, I came up with a new word. Uh, uh, I think I heard it from someone else last year. Romo. Relief of missing out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a perfect way when you trade it everything or when you see prices it went down and you didn't buy anything at the at the top so i think this is uh this is a great definition to explain the traders feelings <laughs> what was the worst thing you bought last year worst token yeah. that you bought last year so i think the worst what i bought was um it was a project uh called crypto chicks have you heard of, of that? I've heard of Crypto Chicks. So I, I think the art is perfect. There are so many beautiful girls. And what's interesting, all the girls that held the project, they were trying to find that Crypto Chick that looked like her. So I bought really beautiful and kind of rare, but I didn't know that the artist stole the idea from the different artists. And I kind of bought that like 0.56. And now it's point 0.1, uh, a little bit over than point 0.1. And I think regarding that, it was the worst investment. But still, in summer, I could trade that to buy little pudges. All this doesn't matter because I lost my collection uh, that I accumulated. But I have to say that uh, I was even I also bored banana. Have you heard of bored banana? I've heard of board banana. Yeah, so I bought, but I didn't spend much money. I spent my maybe point fifteen, and I ended up selling it for point oh five, is so like three times less. But I think still think that it was good practice to pay for your experience and selection of the projects you you should be having or not. Yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, so, uh, as we end every interview, we like to do two things. One, where can people find you online? What's your Twitter? So, my Twitter name is Y underscore Lorelei. Yeah, thank you. Uh, nice. And uh, words of wisdom, 10 seconds. Words of wisdom? Yep. So, uh, never give up, even if your wallet was drained. And always try to listen to your gut feeling, intuition. All right. Hey, thank you so much. And it's been an amazing time. A great pe pe Penji Pudgy Penguins NYC. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. LFG. LFG. All right. Let's move on. Uh, and as we're going, we're going to be having some other people that we get to talk to. Who do we have here? Yes, sir. I am. I am Randall. Hi, Randall. I am Randall. Yes, sir. Uh, where, do people, where can people find you on Twitter? Uh, I don't even know my uh, Twitter account, but I believe it's the sheep four four three or something like that. Four four three. Yes. The sheep four four three. All right. I bought a lot of uh, little pudgies, and uh, I fomented the rugs, and uh, I've lost a lot of money. But I am very grateful to meet all these amazing people here today. I I sold my rug. Uh, and I, I respect that. I wish I was that smart. Oh, I didn't do it now. I did it like three months ago. But I think that's the smart thing to do. I'm a bag holder. I, I, I like to lose money and uh, I like to hold things. My wife is very good at trading, but I am not. So uh, maybe I should listen to her more. Not the, uh, the, We'll call that financial advice. Yes, yes. I need financial advice. Wives are good for that sometimes. Yes. It's amazing because like she came into this very late after she seen me buying NFTs. Uh, she got into NFTs. So, but yeah, she's much better than I am. All right. Uh, so what, uh, when did you get into blockchain? Blockchain. Blockchain. Does that crypto count? Yeah. So I got into Bitcoin like way early. Like How early? Uh, okay, for me, for me, 2013, 14? Yeah, okay, I got in in 2012. 2012, 
that's so it's like right after it went up to thousand eleven hundred dollars, it came back six hundred something, and I bought like three bitcoins. Then it didn't move forever. So 2016, I sold three for a refrigerator, for a nice refrigerator. I sold three bitcoin for. That's like my biggest regret. And uh, yeah, so I started early, but you know I was impatient and uh, I paid my price. Okay, all right. Uh, what what was the best thing you bought in twenty twenty two? Oh man, uh, you know twenty twenty two. I just I just kept stacking uh, little pudgies, so actually that wasn't a bad thing. Like uh, I I my wife loved little pudgies, and that got me kind of into little pudgies, and uh, I kept stacking. I like ski goggle trade, and I kept stacking ski goggles. And uh, actually, I, I, at this point, I did very well. But so you want to be the master of the ski goggles? I my goal is to have ten percent of the uh, current supply. I am one uh, ski goggle away from that. Uh, uh, for the little pudgies or for the big pudgies? Uh, little. Uh, there's only uh, ski goggles for the little pudgies. Little pudgies, uh, ski goggles. Let's let's shout out if you uh, need to let that go. Yeah, I mean nobody likes little. Uh, nobody likes ski goggles. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, that's what I'm collecting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think. Well, we see my pudge, my little pudgy. You got a, you got a beautiful little pudgy, and uh, I, I like little pudgies better than big pudgies. Me too. And for whatever, they're they're cuter. You see the whole body. They have more traits. They're more interesting. So I've, uh, me and my wife, we we love, love, love the little pudgies, and uh, yeah, I've been accumulating. Nice. Uh, what other uh, NFT projects are you part of? Uh, man, that's uh, a lot of them got. I gave up my sea freight, and I I lost a lot. Of, I was into uh, the fluff world ecosystem. That's the first uh, uh, NFTs I got into, and I collected a lot of fluff world stuff. Um, a lot of that got stolen. I still have a not a bunch, but I have fluff world and pudgy stuff recently i think the most recent stuff i got into is the uh, chibi waifus i follow uh jeebus jeebs jebus yep and uh i i uh i you know i saw people buying chibi waifus i have three chibi waifus but they've gone down so All right. what, what what are you most excited about in 2023 2023 is i'm just trying to survive survive but uh i know i i I just have faith in the um pudgy ecosystem i believe in luca i get excited every time he speaks um so you know i'm just gonna keep uh dollar cost averaging into pudgy stuff like the rocks and little pudgy is a uh, big pudgy is a little expensive so you know i i just keep dollar cost averaging like maybe i'll buy a little pudgy a month or one rock a month um, we'll see how that goes. Hey, yeah, yeah, get into it. But yeah, you know, I, I, like, I'm here meeting all the pudgy people here in New York, and uh, it's, you know, this is the best utility. I, I love all. It's just great people, you know, and like they, they spill a lot of beans, and uh, I appreciate uh, that I, I am here and to be meet everyone, and. Uh, I'm just waiting for Luca to execute all his plans, uh, but I'm a big believer in Luca, so I have. Uh, I'm a very bad trader, so I'm just going to keep holding on to my pudgy stuff. All right. Hey, you know, not everyone's plan it has to be your plan, and you just find out what works right for you. Yes, yes I'm a bad trader, and it's just for me. It's the safer bet is just to uh, buy when it's cheap and just hold because I'm 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 just very bad. At, selling when it gets up so for now i'm just i'm just uh holding on to my uh pudgy stuff and uh just gonna see what happens all right and as we end in every interview we have to ask 10 seconds we're gonna put you on the spot so rapid fire 10 seconds words of wisdom words of wisdom uh just uh be frugal and uh buy little pudgies or rocks <laughs> that's, a, that's all right that's my that's my take all right Awesome. Hey, thank you so much thank for joining you, us today. I, I, it's a great to meet you and uh, 
I, I, pre I appreciate I appreciate everything you bring here. And, uh, it's great to great great to meet you finally. Hey, no, great to meet you. Um, and this is a uh, start of a good tradition. Yes, I hope I uh, see you uh, soon again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see who do we have here next. Namsan. What's up, Namsan? How are you doing today? Yo, how's it going? Good. What's your name? Namsan. Wait, what are we? What's up? We're on Twitter. Yo, what's up? Uh, how can people find you on social media? So you guys can follow me at, at Namsan N A M S A N three two nine. All right. And what is it that you do? So I do. Uh, like in real life or just like... However, you want to answer that question? Yeah, so I'm like a big video game nerd. So I've been into esports like my whole life. I currently work in marketing at an esports cafe in uh, New York. If anyone's in New York, just hit me up. Can get you hooked up. Well, uh, yeah, so I've been into the, the Pudgy Penguins a lot recently. Been doing a lot of community initiatives for them. And um, yeah, that's been like, you know, what I've been up to. Nice. Uh, was, uh, how long have you been in Pudgy Penguins for? So I've been holding my little Pudgy for about a year now. I bought my big Pudgy about like half a year ago. And uh, it's been a vibe. Everyone's been welcoming. No matter what you own, and no matter who you are, they accept you. I have a lisp and a slur. I don't know if you guys like know this, but I can tell. But I have a huge like speech problem that I've been like horribly... It just, you know, knocks my self-confidence. And I owe a lot to the Pudgy community, so, yeah. I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, you probably won't believe me, but I haven't heard a single one of that. Dude, I appreciate that. Yes, it's been something. I've done speech classes, like, almost my whole academic career. And maybe, like, taking those speech classes is the reason why it's in my head so much. But hearing, like, people say that I don't, I don't have it, it just helps me a lot, you know? Yeah, no, and, and so it's one of those things. Uh, are you Do you consider yourself big in, in social media and join a lot of spaces and stuff like that? Yeah, so as of recently, uh, like since October, November, for example, I uh, I took part in uh, the community like a lot. So before then, I was just like a regular holder. I would just go through Twitter mindlessly, and I adjusted. I was like, I have this NFT. I have a dope community. Why, should, why can't I partake in it? And like that just uh, like switched my mindset a lot. So I'm on social media a lot. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok all the time. Part of my in real life job is actually making TikToks and Instagram reels and stuff like that. So social media is like a huge part of my life. Nice, nice. Uh, so uh, what, is, what is one of the big, your most favorite Twitter spaces uh, that you learn the most out of? I learn the most out of. So like, for, so like, you can you can read a lot of articles about NFT news. So, for example, like Nifty Portal by Po and Nick. Those are great guys. They're awesome. But spaces like those where you learn how to communicate with people and learn how to like you know interact with others. I think Thread Guy is a, a, an amazing space host. I talk to him a lot. He's a great guy. I think just myself being like a, I've always been not confident in myself and always been like shy. So learning from those guys with how to communicate with other people has been one of the most amazing spaces that I've listened to. Nice. Um, what was the best thing you, uh, outside of Pudgy Penguins, what was your most favorite thing that project that you bought into last year? Doesn't even have to be a good project, but project that you really wanted to buy into. So the project has to be Cozy Penguins. 100%. Co Co you said Cozy. Cozy Penguins, yeah. It's a project owned by uh, Zugi. He's like a really big bag holder in Pudgy Penguins. So I learned about that community. I bought them. I have multiple. And they're like very gaming inspired. So they're building their own game. And since I myself being a huge gaming nerd, I figured it's a perfect project. Why not get into it? I used, uh, I used the Discord all the time. I'm chatting in it all the time. And it's a great vibe. They're playing games all the time. They're either gaming or hosting spaces, interacting with the community. That community is amazing. They accept anyone who doesn't own a Cozy Penguin. And even though I own one myself, when I didn't, they still accepted me. Nice. Uh, have you found that to be a really big thing within Web3 acceptance? Yeah, I think it's hard to feel accepted. For example, a lot of people that I talk to, they find this hard middle ground in real life. Like, for example, in school, you're either a jock or a nerd. And uh, it's hard to find that middle ground. In Web3, no one gives a fuck who you are. You could be like, 
a straight A student, you could average a 2.1 GPA. No one gives a fuck. It's just how the vibes are, how you communicate with each other, with each other, and I think that's a huge part in why I like being here. And I think that's super important, being able to feel accepted. You basically, not, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Like for example, I'm in a pudgy penguin meetup. I'm here with Taco. This guy is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. And like, you just want to feel accepted. And like, you know, that's what it is. Meetups, community meetups like this. That's that's just a huge point. It's not like because you want to like show off to people or flex. It's because you want to be a part of something, being part of a community. So what would be a, a good step for someone that's wanting to move forward in if they're having any issues in Web3? What, what's something that they could move forward with that might move them in the right direction? I think uh, finding people on Twitter and interacting with them a lot, either being a reply guy or DMing, that's how I got my start on Twitter. That's how I was able to grow my Twitter. And joining genuine Discord communities, you don't have to speak in Discord a lot. Pop in here and there interact with the community nights, um, interact with people on Twitter, just like DMing people, replying to people, you'll get yourself noticed and like, you'll soon find to realize that all those headlines about NFTs going down 99%, yeah, fine, they may be true, I'm not gonna lie, I'm down bad in terms of financial gains, but in terms of my self uh, confidence and my social skills and my mental, posit my mental health, I'm up tenfold. Nice. And it's one of those things, too, where the number one mantra of of, blockchain, of crypto is don't spend more than what you're w willing to lose. And so if you're spending the money that you're spending the money instead of a stock, giving that up to go buy something, you know, you're, you're, you're almost mad money in a way. But then it's money you would have spent on a coffee that would have been gone in five, 20 minutes. But instead, you're getting into a community that's accepting you for life, even be even beyond holding it, you know? Yeah, for sure. So I bought my cozy penguin for like ten dollars. And that's like like you said, that's two Starbucks drinks. And like I'll drink those Starbucks drinks in like a couple hours. But I have these these cozy penguins in my wallet. Fine, they might not go up tenfold like everyone wants to, but in terms of mental health and positivity and the vibes like are able to be brought to your life, I'm up tenfold and I have no complaints about that. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much. So once again, where can people find you online? Yes. Yeah, so Nonsan329. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. I uh, just want to give a shout out to uh, Taco for interviewing me. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Not a problem. Okay. Final question. 10 seconds. Hot seat. Ready or not. Here it comes. Words of wisdom. Um, fuck, you put me on the spot and I'm like a huge mental person. Um, don't care about what other people think about you. Focus on yourself and you'll realize that everyone else around you is also focusing on themselves. So you shouldn't worry about what other people think about you because they will 99% not care. All right. Hey, that's how we have it. Find a community that cares. Thanks for coming out to this uh, community meetup. Dude, it's been amazing. All right. Let's move on to our next interview. Let's see where we can go. I think I stole your seat and I apologize. Sorry. All right. We're moving on. We're moving around. What's up, bro? What's up? Who who do we have? Oh yeah, we are live. What's your name? My name is Dimitri. What's up, bro? Where can people find you online? At non fungible D. And what is it that you do in Web3? Lose money. <laughs> And you're a Pudgy Penguin holder for how long? I am. I think it's 42, 14 or something like that. I got a Pudgy. I got a little Pudgy. I got two rods. All right. And what got you into a little Pudgies or Pudgies? Uh, the NFT mania when I bought the fucking top at 4 ETH. It was a floor Pudgy at 4 ETH. And, uh, and I was hooked ever since. How, how's the community side of it been for you? I love it, man. I mean, anything else I didn't believe in, I've sold already. The pudgies I've held strong, and I'm happy I have. And so, what, the meetup tonight, where are we at tonight? We are in Koreatown. I forget the name of the spot, but... Yeah. And, and so, obviously, getting to meet with other pudgies and everything like that, how's that been going for you? It's been going great. It's a great time. All right. uh, what was the worst thing you bought in 2023? 
2022. 2022, worst thing I bought. Jesus. I don't know. Uh, nothing's coming to me, probably because there's just so many. I didn't buy that much in 2022, to be honest. I don't have nothing that's really sticking out. What was what was the, the best move you made in 2023 so far or that you're getting ready to make? Oof. Uh, oh, fuck. We're getting thrown out of here. We're actually not getting kicked out. We're getting moved on because we've been here for so long having a great time. We're going to continue this comp interview. We're going to end tonight right now, and we're going to end this as we end every space with words of wisdom. Thank you so much for joining us. Closed mouth cannot be fed, and you cannot feed a closed mouth. And with that, best knock-knock joke ever. You want to help me with it? Yeah, let's do it. All right, knock-knock. Who's there? 